okay, I'm still laying the background or history to understand the book of Esther. Because what we do, we do not study, we just read. And if I ask you, like I had asked, I said, make sure you study the book of Esther. All you do is just read chapter 1 through 10 and you're good. But you have to study to know how it all came about. All right, so we are talking about certain major player in the book of Esther. But know this, life is not about you. Life is not about you. You are part of God's agenda. Somebody walked before you. You walking now. Somebody will walk after you. But all together, we are carrying out the plan and the purpose and the promises of God. Know that he's a sovereign God. He's in control. And he knows what he's doing. Sometimes we don't. But he knows what he's doing. All right, so let me back up where we were now. I introduced to you last week the main arch enemy in a book of Esther. The main character, his name is Haman. And any time the name Haman is mentioned, it defines him, Haman, the Agagite. For the reference, Esther, chapter 3, verse 1. Verse 10, chapter 8, verse 3, verse 5, chapter 9, verse 24. Haman, the Agagite, he wanted to destroy the Jews. So now let us back up. How did these Agagite came on the scene. So you have to go back. Where did they start? They all started in a book of Genesis. Like I said, from Genesis to Revelation, it is a story. The player changes. But the message is the same. God always says he's a God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He always said that. I can give you plenty of reference on that. God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Genesis 50 verse 24. Genesis 50 verse 24. Exodus 3.15. Exodus 3.15. Then Stephen comes back in a book of Acts, the seventh chapter, verse 35. He is defined as God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis 12, 1 through 3, God of Abraham. Genesis 12, 1 through 3, God of Abraham. Genesis 21, verse 12. Genesis 26, verses 3 and 4, God of Isaac. Genesis 28, 14 and 15, he is called God of Jacob. How did this Agagite, Agadar, 
Amalekite started. Are you ready? Listen to this. Abraham, Isaac. How many boys Isaac had? Jacob and Esau. He is called God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Guess who is left out? Esau. Guess where the Amalekite came from? Did you hear me? See, when you study the book of Esther, oh, he hates. Why does he hate? Hatred didn't happen in Esther. Went way back from the mother's womb to nations. Are in your womb. There were two boys. Did you hear me? Lord didn't say that two boys. Uh, he said two nations. So God is always talking in the terms of eternity. And so if you don't know that Amalekai started as descendants of Esau, then you know Esau was always hunting down Jacob. You follow what I'm saying? Have you ever thought why Bible writes and this one? And his father was this. And he was the father of this. And he was a great. Why does Bible say that? So you can study uh, which bloodline. Not ancestry.com. They just came up now. But back in the days. So when you want to talk about. 6,000 so 6, years later. Here comes Agag. Here comes Haman. Hold up. Let me check the bloodline. That's why I always tell people. When you is dating. No, whose kid is they? I'm sorry, folks. You don't even know the last name. That's my boo. What's boo's last name? Where the boo came from? Where did his daddy come from? Where did boo's grandfather came from? See, then this, eh, this Haman, he ain't crazy. He couldn't help. Is he no blood? It's amazing how many people I talk. They had no clue. So let's follow, fast forward. You know, the Lord spoke to Abraham. Genesis twenty two eighteen. In thee all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Talking about Abraham. Father of many nations. Through your descendant. Talk about Jesus. Doesn't say descendants. Descendant. Jesus. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So all right. Abraham. Isaac. Jacob. Joseph. Goes on. Goes on. Goes on. Then there's another little guy. Benjamin. See, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the history now. Okay? So here is a two lines going. Here is Esau's family. Amalekites. Here is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. You remember those guys? Benjamin is there. We're going to come back to Benjamin here in a minute. So last week I told you in uh, Exodus 17 verses 8 through 16. Exodus 17, 8 through 16. Deuteronomy 25, 17. And especially Exodus 17 verse 14. The Lord say, I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalekai from the face of the earth. Did you hear me? So why would you hook up with the one?
Bible says God be for us. Who can be against us? Flip it. If God be against you. Who can be with you? The Lord say. Huh? Esau. You go back in the Hebrews. He was man. Full of lust. So his descendants, Amalekites, watch it now. Here are God's people. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God already told Abraham, your descendants will be in a strange land. They will serve for 400 years. But don't pray. I'm going to pull them out. So they came out. Watch it. Two rows goes here. Esau, Amalekites, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Life goes on this way. And God said, this ones. Because when they came out, God brought them out. And they stood against. Oh no, you cannot go. We ain't going to let you go. And the Lord said, hey, that's what you think. Remember the book of Esther? He's a sovereign God. He don't have to ask nobody what to do. He's going to do what he wants to do. Especially what he has said that he's going to do it. Let's go on. So here we go. Here is Amalekites. Now here is Benjamin boys. You follow what I'm saying? And then you go to 1 Samuel 9 chapter, verses 1 and 2, you will run into a man by the name of Kish. Who was from the tribe of Benjamin? And guess whose son was? His son was Saul. Hello? I hope you're following which way we are going. Huh? Here are Amalekites. Esau's descendants. God said, I'm going to wipe you all out. Even you all remember, you will know, they will know that you were exits. I'm going to wipe you out. On the other side, God said, look here, Abraham, through you, nations will come, meaning Israel will come. Your descendant, the Lord Jesus, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So these boys want to stop Jesus coming. Not only stop the Jews, they want to stop Messiah coming. And God said, oh, okay. Last week I told you. The people came. They said, we want to do like everybody else. Give us a king. And Prophet Samuel said, no, we have a king called Jehovah. The Lord is our king. He said, no, we want a king. And the Lord said, okay, okay, okay. Even your disobedience doesn't stop God from working. We want a king. And so the Lord spoke, spoke to Samuel. He said, look here, my man. Tomorrow, at this time, book of Esther is about timing of God, not your timing. Make sure you are on God's time. But we want God to be on my time. Book of Esther He's large. He's in charge. He's a sovereign God. He's going to do what he got to do. He will flip nations. He will change places. He will change the time. He will change the season. But one thing and one thing only. What he said it comes to pass. What did he say? I'm going to wipe out even their remembrance. And so years passes. 5, 10, 100, 1,000, 2,000. And people say, huh. Amalekites are kicking. Getting worse and worse. And they think we're good. So God, listen to me. The devil's kingdom, God's kingdom, you got a choice. Play his game, you'll be blessed. Go here, your name will be wiped out. 
So the Lord said, okay, give them a king. Tomorrow by this time, you know the story. Saul went to look for his father's donkey. Couldn't find it. The servant said, Let's go see the man of God. They went to the man of God. Man of God said, who are you? I am Saul. Who is your daddy? Okay. Which tribe? Benjamin. No problem. Pour the oil. You the king. How does that thing happen? Huh? It doesn't happen automatic. God. The master puppeteer, he channeled it. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. How come his donkey didn't get, get lost before? How come it got, got lost that day? Book of Esther is always about that day, that night, when, then, as soon as, boom, boom. You don't see God's name in it. But guess what? He's controlling it. Saul doesn't know why he became a king. Because he thought he was tall and handsome and he got all dead. No. God chose him to be a king. By the way, Saul, the anointed of God. Wait a minute. If you carry a title, the anointed of God, shouldn't you be doing God's business? But just because you call yourself this, the man of God, the anointed of God, I'm going to stay out of, I'm, I'm going to behave. It doesn't matter what you call. But if you don't do it, God, let him become a king. He said, when you were nobody, I chose you. As a matter of fact, he was hiding. And I chose you to be a king. You don't know why I chose you to be a king. Because thousands of years, I had promised, I'm going to wipe all of them out. And guess what? What an honor for me to use you. Come on, Saul. Go there. Yes, sir. What should I do? Go there. I am going to give you victory. Yes, sir. What am I supposed to do? Kill all. Kill their kids. Kill their dog. Kill their cat. Kill their everything. Just, just kill it. Samuel said, make sure you do it. Yes, yeah, Samuel gone. There is Saul. Not knowing he is a battle axe in the hand of God. God spoke to Jeremiah, you are my battle axe in my hand. And through you, I'm going to wipe out. Oh, hey God. That's where I left you last week. And he spared him. Samuel comes late. You know the whole story. He sacrificed. Da, 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 da. Samuel comes late. And before Samuel even say anything. Hey prophet. Oh, pray, hey, hey, you know me. I already obey God. You did. Uh, did you? Well, I, I, I done it all. Uh, uh, and what is all this cattle? What is all the sheep? And uh, oh, Don't worry about that. Is the people. When the man of God doesn't take responsibility and shove it on the people and blame them, we got a problem. Did you kill them? Yes, everything you told me. You know me, I obey God. He said, who is this fool? That's Agag. What did God say? Kill him. Why you spare him? Well, you know, you know how I am. Listen to this. And you wonder. That's where I left you last week. So Samuel said, bring him to me. So they brought Agak to Samuel. Read the word. And the Bible say, and Samuel hew him into pieces. Cut him up. Question is this now. If Agag was killed by prophet Samuel, why am I saying Haman came from the descendant of King Agag? We're going to find a solution here. All right, let's go back. You remember when the news came that Saul and his son Jonathan had died. You remember that? 
Because the tradition says the new king will come with all of his homeboys, all of them, and wipe out everybody from the kings, every single one of them. Kill all of them. Uh-huh. So there was a nanny taking care of Mephibosheth. You remember it? And she heard it. She said, uh oh, they will come. So she started running with the little boy, huh? and she flicked and dropped him. You know the story. So let me tell you something what happened. He doesn't say it, but you can study paralyzed. As soon as they saw Agag spared. Watch me now. If I'm Agag's boy sitting there, and Samuel said, bring him to me, and Agag goes this way, you know, I'll be gone. It don't take that much faith. Bottom line is this. Somehow, someway, because Saul didn't kill him, one of the descendants of Agag left. Ran away. You don't see nothing again. Year passes. Year passes. Now watch it. Esau. His descendants, here is Amalekai, huh? carry on, carry on, carry on. Here comes Agag. Samuel killed him, but one of his descendants is carrying on the mass again. Okay? Saul doesn't obey God now. That doesn't mean nothing. God will raise up another one will obey. And guess who they were? Mordecai and Esther. Ha uh ha. -huh. Come on folks. Let's go over here. Huh? Guess where they came from? From the tribe of Benjamin. Oh Lord God help me. Huh? Hmm? Esther 2 and 5 says, Mordecai, who was the son of Joel, son of Shemiah, son of Kis, a Benjamite. Do you follow what I'm saying? Esau, Amalekite, Agag, Haman, that bloodline goes this way to oppose God. This is another line called the blessed line. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Uh, if you serve me, you'll be blessed on this side. If you serve, he'll be on this side. So Amalekai, remember God said, I'm going to wipe them out. Saul missed it. But because you missed it, you're the one going to suffer the consequences but God will raise somebody else in your family are we, are we following here now huh so Bible says and Mordecai it says and he was a Jew Esther was his cousin Esther was an orphan it doesn't matter whether you is orphan or not. Because you think her mama died, her daddy died. She's an orphan. There ain't no way she can make it. That's what man thinks. But did I say it is the providence of God, the way God does work, the way God moves, the way God doesn't move, the way... And we will study it. So Mordecai raised her. So folks, story doesn't start when the, the beauty pageant starts. Talk to me. See, that's how we study. That's how we read the book. That's not how you read the book. You go back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then come down to Benjamin, then come down to Saul, and then come down to all these. And Mordecai is one of the guys from the tribe of Benjamin. And he didn't know. 
But at the same time, at the same time, the devil is working. And we will talk about the kings. All right. So let, let, let me just bring you the history. So starting next week, we can start reading chapter one. All right. You remember Jeremiah. Read the whole book of Jeremiah. Bible says, and all the false prophet, peace, peace, talking to the Judas, the backsliding Judah, the idol worshiping Judah, huh? all the false prophet, peace, gone. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. He is merciful. He is loving. He is kind. And here comes Jeremiah. What's wrong with you all? You all going into captivity. No, we ain't. One guy came and slapped the prophet. Huh? So Jeremiah said, all right. And then he goes over there and by, makes him a yoke of wood. Here he comes. All the prophets in a king, they all they are prophesying, thou shalt be head, not the tail, and thou shalt be these. They sound like today, don't it? Here comes Jeremiah. What's wrong with you, fool? What you got up your neck? That's a yoke. What minute thee? He said, you is going. Where are we going? We go in a captivity. We go in captivity. We not. Took it. Broke into pieces. Slapped him. Put him in a dungeon. Okay. Jeremiah comes next day. He got him a, 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 a iron. <laughs> What's wrong with you fool? Didn't we destroy that yoke? No, no, you didn't understand. Huh? Try to destroy this. Because you is going. We're not going. We children of God. We God's kicker. God cannot let us go into captivity. Jeremiah said, yeah, but you forgot the condition. If my people will seek me, if my people will follow me, it shall be well with you. But if you won't, you is going into captivity. Who said that? I say that. How many? 70 years. 70 years. Yep. So here they go. Including him. Including Jeremiah. All the people from Judah wind up in a Babylon for 70 years. Seventy years finished, and there is a king who is a hidden king. His name is King Cyrus. He said, talking to his boys, he said, "What did what did this little do say?" You know, but Jeremiah, he said, seventy years and you be gone." So he said, "What you all doing here?" Did you hear me? A heathen king obeys God better than his own people. King Cyrus, come, go home. I know you all, you all always quit, quote that scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, pray for this nation so it will be well with you. I know the plans that I have for you. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, so now, the word came out. The king said, we can go home. Well, they decided to go. See, you need to study. Book of Esther is not the book of Esther. You got to go study Jeremiah. You got to study Ezra. When was the last time you study Ezra? Uh, you don't even know he's there, do you? He's going to slap you when you see you in heaven. So 70 years is over. This hidden king, you all go, go home. Why? I don't know why, but this man say 70 years is enough. He got to go, go on. Okay. So the first group comes. 
and the leader was Zerubbabel. You remember? You all quote the scriptures, Zechariah 4 and 6, not by might, not by power, but by... You don't even know why he's saying that. Amazing, charismatic people. We quote this scripture. We don't know the history. We don't know the background. Because Zerubbabel came from captivity of 70 years. He was the first one to come. And the Lord said, you're going to build the temple. Huh? Yes. Zerubbabel, come here. Because you will not be by my, but by, but my spirit. Why? Because I had told through Jeremiah 70 years and you're going to come back. But before you come back, before you come back, huh? ah, don't try to build your house. Build my house. When was the last time you read the book of Haggai? Come on, folks. Huh? You, you study the book of Esther, but Esther doesn't show up. She's the last one. Zechariah comes. We got to build the temple, build the temple. Or I build the temple and all that. But now what you all going to do? Build the people before you build your steeple. Hey. Oh, you didn't hear. Tweet that. That will fly. So the first group, poo. Zechariah. Second group, Ezra, the scribe. Okay, you got the temple. You got everything. Huh? The Bible says he got him a wooden stool, he got the book, and he broke it down and said, study it, and let's obey the word of God. And he came. So now Esther shows up between Ezra chapter 6 and 7. That's where she shows up. But let me slide something else in. Remember about two years ago we studied the book of Nehemiah? The first one, Zerubbabel. Second one was Ezra. Third one was Nehemiah. You remember Nehemiah? How he, he prayed and he fasted and he cried. Woo, 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 woo. And watch one word. And see, Holy God doesn't miss any word in the scripture. He said, I know. But I needed permission to go. I needed provision to go. And I needed a protection to go. And Bible say, and I went to see the king. Watch it. And the queen was sitting next to him. Guess which queen was that? That was Esther. Wow. So without Queen Esther, then I wouldn't have got the permission. Because we will study. The king said, girl, what you want? I give you half the kingdom. I don't want to have the kingdom. <laughs> Just give him a provision. Give him some protection. Let them go in peace. And we're good. Nehemiah left. So this is how it winds up. So Esther. Okay, now watch it. Not everybody left. Did you hear me? 70 years is over. But not everybody left. Somebody had some farm. Somebody had their houses. Somebody got tied up. Like us. <laughs> Talk to me. Huh? Even if you have to go somewhere, you can't go nowhere. You know why? You is tied up. With this mortgage and this car and that car. And God said go to there. You can't go do. You can't. That's why Abraham Bible says. And he traveled in a tent. Why? We just a stranger. If the Lord said go. We go. And today, if the Lord say go, we say hold on. Because we're so tied up. We owe everybody in Tulsa. Talk to me. Everybody in Tulsa. We owe everybody in Tulsa. We owe master charge and a visa and, and even a quick trip. <laughs> and don't talk to me about your dealers and Messi's card. Do you follow what I'm saying? We is tied up and we can't obey God. 
So they stayed. We can't go. So now Esther is a book of those who stayed. Had you heard about this background before? That's how you study the scripture. All right now, all right now. So let the, let, uh, let's just talk. So the one who was building spiritual, the other one was building people. Uh, Nehemiah was building wall. So what do we learn from Esther? Everybody look at here. You can be holding a position in a secular world and still obey God to bring about his word. We got enough preachers in the pulpit. We need some teachers in the school. We need some lawyers. Huh? We, we need people of God at the grocery store. At the post office. At the bank. We need people of God. So Esther tells me, even if you are in a secular world, when you commit yourself, if our parents, our parents. I'm going to obey God. All right. So let's go back. So you know, this line, he shall. And here is that guy, Haman. Saul didn't kill him, spare him. Guess what? Saul's descendants talk to me. Call Mordecai, the orphan. God used them to destroy all of 75,000 in one day. Let me tell you something. Don't let your kids do your job. Let them kill their own giants. Talk to me. Talk. Did you hear what I just said? Huh? And as the time, oh, Mashata, as the time gets darker and darker, their demons will be harder than my demons. Why don't you just give them a clean start? Obey God and do what God has called you to do. So when you transfer the anointing, they can have a clean start. They don't have to fight my enemies. They don't have to fight my Daddies, my granddaddies, they can say, hey, come on. My daddy gave me a new start. Why don't you obey God? Do what God called you to do. So it will be well with your children. It shall be well with your children's children. Just do what God called you to do. And it shall be well with thee. Say it to the righteous. It shall be well with thee. It shall be well this day. All right, let me close now. Okay, so I have introduced all of the all of the players, all of the players. But let me introduce the king. <laughs> because without him, we ain't got no book of Esther. Okay, so who the fool was? Let's talk about him. See, because if I tell you, here is Esau and Amalekai and all of them. Here is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Benjamin and, and Saul and Achilles and, and all these things. Here's another king. Where did he come from? All right. What did I say? The king Cyrus. You remember him? He was heathen. Read Isaiah 45 and you will study about him. The Lord said, even if he's a heathen, even if he doesn't know me now, I'm still going to use you. Do you understand? God will use whoever he wants to. Even Pharaoh he will use. Even your boss he will use. 
even your whoever look here god will use anybody the heart of the king is still in the hand of the lord and the god will use them for what purpose not to bless you shut up but to carry out his plan and his purpose our problem is this god bless me no 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 it's not about you blessing you it is about his name his glory his reputation his kingdom his will thy will be done when we come to the point then god can move but we have raised a selfish generation prophesying selfish prayers i heard somebody let everybody stand up let me prophesy a house that is paid off shut up they don't even give tithe I charge you today. Fight your demons. So your children won't have to fight your demons. Fight the demon of lust. Pornography. Drug addiction. Greed. Money. Fight. Kill it. Cyrus. He didn't have a son. But he had a daughter. Atosa. A-T-O-S-S-A. -S -S she married. Somebody called Darius. You remember that name? Darius. In the book of Daniel. Uh-huh. So here's my last statement. Then we go home. So when you see the name, I don't even know how to call his name. X-E-R-E-X-E-S. I call it King X. And then you will hear another word called King Ahasuerus. Guess what? It's the same guy. Okay, but who is this Mr. X? Uh-huh. Mr. X is a grandson of King Cyrus. King Cyrus abolished slavery. He abolished the bondage. But his son came up. He said, we ain't going to do that. He killed his boys. Anybody who came against, he killed everybody. Because he wanted to rule from Ethiopia called Cush. And guess what? The name of India is mentioned only in the book of Esther. So, this is the background. These are the players. And we will start reading chapter 1 and we break it down. I know your eyes has been enlightened. You have learned this. And... I will pass this page to Miss Lily. She will type it for you. So you can have this whole background. That's how you study. <laughs> because nobody can type my notes. Nobody can type my notes. Only she can. <laughs> She's been doing it for 30 years. She knows what, what it means. Say so thank God for Miss Lily. Okay, my last charge. You know, I can just uh, look at me. You know your demon, so don't play that you don't know. You know we demon you fighting. Don't worry about her. Don't worry about me. Fight your own demon. And do not destroy them. Kill it. What I meant to say, do not defeat them. Because if you defeat, they will arise again. But the Lord say, I'm going to remove even remembrance of this. Father, we thank you for the history. 
So now we are part. What you're about to do in North Tulsa, in Oklahoma, and the world. And we are in your hands. Use us in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. Thank you.